They're coming. They're coming your way. They'll be here soon. He who holds the sword shall be invincible on the field of battle. That is a legend. My boss had his eyes on this piece for quite some time. Bring my package? Oh, yeah. Name's Sung, ex-North Korean general, obsessed with the occult. They've got the artifact that will lead to what everyone wants. She holds the key to stopping them. Take it easy, Miss Gaines. We're here to help. This is about the Sword of Mars? That's exactly what this is about. It's got 12 Soviet-era suitcase nukes, each one capable of wiping out an entire city. Cerberus. I don't think this film was worth the effort I put into getting this fucking thing to work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, from a strict st standpoint, no. But in terms of the podcast, also no. Also no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I actually think this movie is interesting for the podcast. I just want everybody to know that what you're about to hear cost me $10 and three audio setups to get working. Welcome to Rough Cuts. And specifically, what did you get it working on? Why, yes, the knockoff <laughs> uh, Chinese DVD player that had an HDMI port on it that was just a dummy port and connected to nothing to pretend like it could do HDMI output. Correct. Yep. You had to use the DVD player of Attila to unlock I did. The, the Hellhound of Cerberus so that you could unleash the nuclear codes of our podcast onto the unsuspecting world through the dictatorship of North Korea with a bunch of mercenaries from the State Department, but not from the State <laughs> Department, you see, because they're actually... I... I, I whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it was fucking... <laughs> so one thing I need to show real quick, and this isn't going to make a lot of sense because of the, the audio style of I was, the Because it's an audio podcast and you're showing me a physical so, thing? So yes. I have the DVD. Mm -hmm. I need you to see that this is the widescreen release that we watched. <laughs> <laughs> which is very funny it's gonna play very very well for our audio only because it was format. in four by three but like chopped off the top and bottom oh yeah it was yeah it was certainly not widescreen well if you stretched it out another 50 yeah. percent so it filled the screen I, maybe it would have been i don't know in general i have questions about this dvd release because it just didn't work on like anything Anything but the shittiest of, of quality hardware. So you got this new inbox. Uh, yeah. Where did you have to find it uh, on a blanket down at like a flea market? <laughs> okay, what what, so, what so flea market to... exactly did you get this from? Okay, so I had to fly to the Philippines. And then, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there was a... And then repel into market. a well. Yeah. Yeah, I repelled into a well in the back alley market. And... Within the well was a tomb of Attila. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about this. <laughs> and, uh -huh. and I opened up the tomb, and Attila was just there being like, Hey, kid, you want some DVDs? I got, I got fucking Just eating Star some Wars. popcorn like Attila does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got Star Wars. You want Star Wars, kid? That's and you go, ooh, oh, cool, man. I love Star Wars. And then he's like, yeah, it's that new, like, special edition one where they added all the shit. And you went... Never mind. <laughs> I'm good. He's like, well, I got this Conan over here. You want Conan? Yeah, Conan. Yeah. Do you have anything else with swords? Oh, I guess we got Cerberus. You want Cerberus? <laughs> it's got it's got a cool sword. <laughs> it's got a cool sword. That's about it. Yeah, sure. Fucking hit me up, Attila. <laughs> Let's go. Well, I'll take your Cerberus film, I guess. <sighs> This movie has a Cerberus. They didn't lie about that. I guess. The back of the box. Again, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show my co-host. By the way, I'm I boys. This is Rough Cuts. Oh yes, hi, sorry, welcome to Rough Cuts. This is our podcast about bad dog movies. Yeah. 
uh, we're that's the co-host. Ilion. Yeah, I'm yeah. Ilion. This is Voix. I don't know. We're doing a thing. I don't fucking know. The back of this DVD doesn't have a single picture of this Cerberus on it. They did not feel confident at all in their CG. I mean, should at, they have? At all. And they should not have. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> like, that, that was the bad. smart move. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't get over that it's both not rated and rated R. And that it's the widescreen release. This is... I. It feels like a bootleg copy of a film that got a DVD release. It makes no sense. Anyway, this was a sci-fi original. Uh, it's a John Turleski film. John Turleski is Deathstalker. Uh, from the in movie. Deathstalker 2. Deathstalker only. 2 specifically, which is a Jim Wynorski film. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which ties into the doggone Christmas uh, and doggone adventure, and also Munchie, I think you said. And also Munchie, yes. We, we know Jim Wynorski, but this is not a Jim Wynorski movie. Yeah, Jim Wynorski sure has a lot of movies. Um, things like The Hills Have Thighs, and... Uh... <laughs> yeah, but, but this was put out by uh, Sintel Films, which I think has done a, a bunch of sci-fi movies for the Sci-Fi Channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically but this was prior to asylum becoming the sci-fi film studio yes right yeah before so they started doing Sintel mega shark versus trash. giant octopus and yeah sharknado yeah. and all like, that they didn't put out yeah. trash let me let me read a list of films from Sintel films these are not trash so it's doomsday <laughs> device uh-huh uh-huh lava lantula oh yeah um, yeah these are ball yeah. the storm guard dark storm Earth Storm, Polar Storm, Super Storm, Two Lava, Two Lantula, the sequel to Lava Lantula. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. We studied it in uh, film class yeah, back Storm in college. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was uh, a real breakthrough <laughs> experimental. <laughs> two Lava, Two Lantula. Uh, they also did the movie Snowmageddon. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And of course, they're very well known for The Boy, the Dog, and the Clown, which is a 2019 drama. Oh, God. Which we might it have has to watch. a dog. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, we might have uh, to uh, But they also. So did you say that this is a John Turleski film. Just to clarify, yeah. he acts in it as a like minor character, but he's not. Is he not the director also? Because it, it, when the movie starts, mm-hmm. it says a John Turleski film. So maybe he produced I... it? It literally says that, so... <laughs> Maybe he did... Does he direct it? I didn't... I, I think he directs and also just has a cameo. Let me let me double check. Oh, I'm no, yeah, certain. directed and written yes. by John Terleski. Okay, you're right. I it's, apologize. It's John Terleski all the way down. Oh, all the way down that well fuck. with this man. <laughs> oh, that's, uh... Yeah. So we have Deathstalker to thank. I also, this. just as an aside, I, I want to mention that because I went and looked this on the Wikipedia while we were t- discussing this just now, the reception section is just Christopher Armstead judged the film as not being, quote, all that bad. <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> it's not all that bad. You know, it could be it's, worse. Uh, I mean, for a sci fi original, it's uh, not all that bad. I- I think the biggest problem with this film, amongst all of the problems with this film, <laughs> yes, <laughs> mm-hmm. is that it's too derivative from Raiders of the Lost Ark, of all things. Yeah, yeah, that's probably it, it's way it. too derivative of that. Like, it doesn't well, doesn't know how to be its own thing in a way. I I think the bigger problem with that is that it makes its Raider of the Lo- Raiders of the Lost Ark part boring as shit. Like that too. The the yeah. movie is. <laughs> extremely wild in and very fun because of that like very stupid extremely stupid but also it just fucking starts like so the beginning of this movie is a man in a museum going oh yes we've just gotten in the uh, armor of attila the hun which obviously shows the uh famous sword of the god mars that he used to become invincible as everyone knows who studies attila um Mm -hmm. you know that he stole it from the The god God mars and then yeah yeah yeah, became the god of war himself on earth as as everyone knows 
And the guy is nodding along with him going, oh, oh, oh very fascinating. And then d operatives dive through the ceiling glass of this museum and dis kill all the security guards. And they're like, aha, we're here for the invincible sword, actually. Give us the armor. And then they murder that guy, too. And they whisk away on their repelling lines. Because the guy that he was talking to, museum guy who was, uh, was talking to him and he actually turned out that he was an evil man who was there for the, the armor. And we get a slow motion shot of him walking towards a helicopter, carrying this ancient armor on his back as he's dun 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 And that, cool that's guy. our big intro. And then when it gets to the fucking Indiana Jones stuff, it's just them sitting in like a really bad matte painting green screen set and going, oh, it looks like the walls change from cave here. Maybe this is where Attila is. Yeah, they're and just like it's bumbling walking around for being five like, minutes. oh, uh, or do we go left? I guess. Let's go left. Maybe. Maybe I, I studied Attila. Maybe I think Attila always used his right. He was very famous for being right-handed. So you don't go left. <laughs> and everybody goes, wow, that's really wow, intelligent. Okay, I'm glad yeah. that we have our Attila specialist. All right, so let's go right. And then they go, ah, oh, yeah, it's great. And then they walk, and then they get to the next well, spot, and they do the they same thing. They go to the next spot, but not until Beavis and Butthead chime in. It's <laughs> <laughs> some good dialogue. Uh, guys, they like Attila. <laughs> uh, he uses his right hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then they laugh, use, and then it goes What does he use his right hand for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's John Terleski's character, by <laughs> the way. <laughs> He's butthead. Yeah, I love that he put himself into the movie as a self-insert, and it specifically is like this operative State Department rogue agent man that's a good guy that goes huh, 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 with his other friends <laughs> the whole time. It's so good. That I, I like that part. I actually, yeah, I kind of enjoyed it there. Just... actually have a character. It's being dumb as hell. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, they're incredibly stupid, but it's fun. Yeah. But, okay, so at the beginning when the operatives drop down into the museum to steal mm. the breastplate of Attila so that they can then, you know, acquire the sword of Mars uh, from the God of War, uh, which is guarded by Cerberus or something, they can't get it out of the, the glass case, though, with their guns that shoot bullets because glass... Oh, yeah naturally reflects bullets so they need that guy to open it but he well they need the yeah alarm. they need him to open it because they don't want to set the alarms off and stuff yeah and then he sets off the alarm and they kill him and they're like oh no how are we gonna open this oh geez oh beans now what you killed him well also we oh no we can't set off any of the alarms which we didn't do by repelling in through the skylights and firing yeah. off guns killing eight different people it makes no sense at all, but they, no, they break the nothing in this movie does. does. It, after that, it like hard cuts to a uh, professor in a different museum. There's a yes. lot of museums in this movie. <laughs> well, for the first like twenty minutes, and then it rapidly yeah, changes to that, caves. Um, that character is Doctor Samantha Gaines. Gaines, I think. Yes. But she's yep, played yep, by Emmanuel right. uh, Vajir, mm -hmm. um, who is. Like, actually a pretty okay TV actress. And I, I think she does an okay job in this movie. She's fine. Yeah. yeah. She's fine. So she's better than the yeah. other characters in this movie. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I've seen her in a few things, yeah. and she's she's de decent. She's apparently in a lot of Saw movies and stuff. And like you said, she's a, just... Yeah. A, a TV staple. You'll see her in a lot of, like... CSI and Law and Order and Andromeda and mm -hmm. Supernatural and Magnum PI and yeah, like you know, she's just kind of a actress that goes all over TV for a bunch of different shows. But she, I mean, she's good. She's fine. Yeah, she's fine. Uh, there's it's, an uh, FBI agent there though that is yeah. like talking to her about the uh, theft mm -hmm. of Attila the Hun's armor. And he's like, "Oh, they took Attila's breastplate," and she's like, "Why would anybody take Attila's breastplate? The thing that allows you to get." The Sword of Mars, which turns you in, invulnerable to all damage in war. Why would anybody steal that breastplate? With the, with the power of hell. Who would want to do that? Yeah, and by the way, Attila made a deal with Satan, and 
in case you were unaware, Satan also controls the underworld, which is where Cerberus comes from. And if anybody tries to steal that sword, Cerberus will come out and kill them. In fact, there's this story about these two Tomb Raiders. They're called Tomb Raider. You might know them. They're not Laura Croft, though. I'm Laura Croft. And <laughs> these Tomb Raiders <laughs> broke into Attila's set before I could get there. <laughs> stole yeah. the sword. Which then, of course, after they walked over the satanic pentagram outside the, the chamber... Uh, woke up Cerberus and killed them both, but that's just a tale. Well, Nobody Cerberus ever... killed them both, but only because you see the sword makes you invincible. But if if but not you them. but Cer but Cerberus no 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 but Cerberus gives you a big spooky <laughs> and when G Cerberus gives you a good spooky bark, then you drop the sword and then you are vulnerable because then you don't have the sword and that's how yeah. Cerberus if you accidentally you. ever drop the sword, like it just falls out of your hand for no reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Cerberus can kill you. So make sure that you don't do that. This will never be relevant again later. <laughs> yeah. You're fun. invincible That's as exactly long as you have the I sword. Would... So absolutely don't just accidentally drop it. That would be bad. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, now that I've told you this tale... This counts as foreshadowing, I think. <laughs> this is irrelevant to the movie that we're, we're doing. Oh, uh, goodbye, FBI agent. Oh, my brother is here. Hello, brother. Oh no, brother is... Uh, do you need money again? What kind of trouble are you in? Oh, yeah. I have horrible gambling debts to awful, awful underworld criminals. And we just let you in to this museum five minutes later where there's a bunch of security guards and this FBI agent. So let's talk about your illegal gambling debts that you have to apparently some very bad, bad people... But you didn't say that it was gambling, though, right? No, it's not gambling. Okay. It's um, definitely not gambling. Just, just go go to my house and stay there because that won't pay a giant target on my back. And uh, mm -hmm. I'll just come and see you later. Yeah. And then it, it hard cuts to her going back to her house and the doors open. And, and she's, she's like, like, huh, I wonder why I, that happened. Silly rascal leaving the door open after you told me there were gambling debts and people coming after you. Oh, Why'd my you brother's such a silly Billy. <laughs> <laughs> James, you left the door open again. Why would you do this? Ah, oh, oh, God, you're you all this so blood everywhere. You weirdo. I told you not to bleed everywhere again. Oh, no. So anyways, so her brother's been kidnapped. <laughs> But that's her reaction. Her reaction is, oh, you goofball. Yep, How yeah. No, she you? has... She doesn't think that it's scary at all that the house is broken into right after her brother said that he's in debt to some very, very terrifying people. And he asked, like, can I borrow $2,000, by the way? And they actually named the amount. I need, yeah, I need $2,000 like, to cover this debt. Very low stakes. This is extremely low stakes. Which become very high stakes in a minute because we find out who he has the gambling debt to. Right. Boix, would you like to explain who he has the gambling debt to? Yeah. So when they abduct him, they take him to Romania. Uh huh. Cutter, mm -hmm. who's the bad guy. Oh, uh, and this Romania was also where the uh, theft took place. Oh yeah, that's also where the theft of Attila's breastplate happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But he drops him off with with the bad guys. And out walks the leader of North The bad Korea. guys that did the museum heist, which is already wild. Yeah, just to, just to put it in perspective. North Korea shows Yes, up. yes. <laughs> then the dictator of North Korea comes out, the as you would expect. North Korea comes out, he's like, oh, In Romania. That's the, that's the brother, huh? For the gambling um, debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and your subordinate <laughs> killed the guy that had all the information about Attila's breastplate. So you abducted this guy from New York City arbitrarily because he's the brother of a lady who knows also about Attila's breastplate. So you told him to tell her to come here mm -hmm. in, to Romania where I, the dictator of North Korea could get that information. So you can get my sword of Mars. Yeah. So that then I will have the bravery to use the 12 suitcase nuclear dirty bombs that I have, um, which are not a threat in and of themselves. They're no. only scary if I acquire the Sword of Mars, and therefore I know I'm invincible and I can just use nukes wherever. 
Sure. I guess. This is 100% the plot of this movie. <laughs> At this point. Any, anyway, Samantha goes to Romania to pick up her brother for his $2,000 North Korean gambling debt. <laughs> the, well, they specifically, they say he says it's not a gambling debt. Yes. At this point. <laughs> then the rest of the movie, they call it a gambling debt. Then so I think that, debt. Yeah. I very I much feel is. like what happened here is that they wrote a couple of different movies and then like... <laughs> I mean, not go to a couple different movies, but during rewrites, like, they had different ideas of the plot, and then mm -hmm. they were, like, scaling things back, because, like, they gave him nuclear weapons, and then they never talk about them again. Suitcase nuclear weapons that you can smuggle no, anywhere in the world. They do, in fact, talk about the nuclear weapons again. Do they? Later. They do. They bring it up. It'll, it'll, it'll come in later. Don't worry about it. I, I'll bring it up. I'll but, like, it. there's very, very little of that, and it... I, I, I don't feel blame like, you for, for missing that, by the way. I, this movie I, is very I, boring. <laughs> yes. And it, and there's a lot of plot, despite that. It's very, very boring, and also there's a lot of plot, and all of the plot is absolutely incomprehensible, because why the mm -hmm. fuck would he owe these guys that broke into a museum in Romania for gambling debts in New York when they work for the dictator of North Korea who is in Romania? Who has nuclear weapons that are impossible, but he needs a mythical sword that everybody know make, knows makes you invincible, and mm -hmm. nobody questions that ever. <laughs> like, just... Ah... Uh. So, the, the dictator of North Korea mm -hmm. his Dobermans on the subordinate that killed the museum yes. guy. Because he's mad. Earlier, mm -hmm. uh, I guess. And then, yeah, Samantha goes to Romania, and she gets in a car with one of the bad guys, who's like, okay, I'm going to take you to the dictator of North Korea, you're going to get your brother back, you just have to tell us how to get Attila the Hun's Sword of Mars. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And and then as they're driving there, right? Like the You even said you're like this guy's a taxi cab driver, right? I'm like, no, he's like Yeah. I'm like, he can't be because he's I'm like he just told her, Well, if you just follow our directions, you'll get your brother back. And you're like, No, he couldn't have said that because he's a taxi driver and they're now being chased by the bad guys because they get chased randomly by a car that just starts shooting at them. Yeah, there's just some random like a jeep or something following mm -hmm. them uh, and they're shooting at them and you're like what the fuck is happening so wait there's another party that's involved now May maybe because they're being chased like did she get picked up by the wrong team of villains i well there's only been one team of villains so far Maybe the team of villains is going after her taxi? But it's not a ta is it a taxi? Yes? Okay. There's just I a wonder if chase. maybe he's supposed to be there. Oh god! No, he's okay, okay, he's the oh, fuck, taxi god, driver! Shit. He is not a taxi driver! So, but he fucks off one direction, and she fucks off the other direction. Mm -hmm. And the, the new bad guys catch up to her, and they're like, Wait, we're actually the good guys. Dun dun dun! We're here so that your brother doesn't get shot by you not showing up to the meeting that you were just on a ride to. Yeah, we're here to we're here to make sure that your brother is protected and safe, which is why we abducted you from the meet where you would have gotten your brother back. <laughs> we didn't think that one through. <laughs> Hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, no, your brother's in some deep shit with North Korea for his gambling debt. And they're like, wait, but you just said it wasn't a gambling debt. Wait a minute. And they keep going back and forth on this. Like I and, said, I feel like that had to be some rewrites and that they were just like, yeah. wait a minute. We don't, this nuclear plot isn't going anywhere and they had to drop it. And she, and... Yeah. And then she's like, well, uh, they, I think they talk about the sword again. Cause she mentioned something about yes. like, if you, if they get the sword, then not only are their nukes going to be a problem, but they'll be invulnerable to battle damage. Yeah, and, as and uh, any never... archaeologist would know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't acquire the Sword of Mars. That's and, real. And Cerberus will come out of, of hell and 
returned them to a place that is worse than the realm of the dead. And then our good guy, like, Macho Man, is like, I don't need a dog to stay out of the realm of the dead. Oh, God, yeah! <laughs> I forgot that line! <laughs> or I something. need a dog to tell me to not go to the realm of the dead. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm that not was John Turleski. <laughs> that was the so sidekick man. Yeah, that was actually John Turleski's even... character. Uh... So, uh, Samantha... This is where the guy... movie is good, by the way. This is yeah. where the movie is still fun, fantastic. I enjoyed the hell out of this. In, in order to get her brother back, they decide to go get the sword before the bad guys and the dictator of North Korea can get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so they drive to a small village in Romania, and they're like, okay, what, was, what do you know about the legend of Cerberus? Oh, well, it says that there's a sign with a picture of a three-headed dog and a, a matte painting of a mountain, and it points towards the location where we need to go in that matte painting that we have to walk into. Oh, and it's like, God. oh, you mean like that winery over there that's been there for, I don't know, 1,700 years? <laughs> That, yeah. that winery that's just been there the whole time with the same... With the it. exact same sign so that we would know that it's this one. And then they oh, turn man, around the corner and it's... So there's... When you say that there's a matte painting, what you mean to say is... Let me just paint a nice visual picture for you. Just oh. like this matte painting. There are about three or four buildings where they're... And, and like, it looks like real buildings somewhere in Europe kind of thing. And sure. then it just cuts off and like they kind of just smudge the edges of that so that then it goes into a matte painting that just has like a windy road up to a spooky castle it is literally the like microsoft solitaire creepy castle art <laughs> done oh, slightly better solitaire, yeah yeah from it's solitaire not it's not good it doesn't look good at all and like there's two houses and then it's just that <laughs> like it just what? No, it, you can't just have the mountain be five feet away from you in the city. It's yeah. it, like the I mountain mean, is can. at the end they of a city it. block. <laughs> but they did it. You can. It's right there on film. God. But So they look at the one side. Also, it just get. it's so perfect because they look and they see the winery and they go, oh, like that one. They turn around and they see the mountain. And as they look at the mountain, the clouds on the mountain part to reveal <laughs> the castle. <laughs> I forgot about that. Like, it's timed perfectly. It's so... Mwah, <laughs> filmmaking. They, yeah, they go up to the castle, and they start climbing the walls, and they jump over the walls, and they're like, yeah, it looks like we're about to enter a tomb. Hell a hell hole. <laughs> he says, yeah, like a tomb straight to hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they go oh, through God, the tube. Oh, God, and this whole time. And, and, then, you know? and then it becomes, like, like a video game for a bit or something. It's mm -hmm. like an adventure game. Like, all right, now here's the tomb, and we're going to do some Raiders of the Lost Dark stuff. So, like, you see those plates on the ground? Those are pressure plates. You step on those, and they'll, they'll set off a booby trap. Like, this dark trap in your neck. Ah, ah dark trap. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, he's... God, okay. The main guy who... By the way, this was the man that said that he was an FBI agent when he saw her the first time. Mm -hmm. um, now he's... I, is he a mercenary? Is he a U.S. government agent? Is he just a concerned citizen? I, I think he's just a macho guy with too much time on his hands. Yeah, like, he just seems yeah. like, I'm Adventure Man. That's all I do. I do adventures. Anyway, he steps on a pressure plate as she's going, like, oh, we need to be careful now. There might be booby traps. And literally at that end of that sentence, yeah. of course, a booby trap happens. Oh, no! And hits him with darts. And the darts hit him, like, these big darts. And they just go, oh. And they pull them out and they go, well, that wasn't too bad. And she goes, oh, but they might be poisoned. But they aren't. Well, but there's nothing we can do about that if they are. So anyways, I guess we'll just keep going. And Let's then it's never it. brought up yeah, again. They just, just drop it. They never then, it's, it. then it's just done. Then that's yeah, the end of that one. They go to a different <laughs> They go to a different puzzle, which is like a Skyrim puzzle with uh -huh. like... A butterfly and a snake and a lion 
And like, oh god, what do we do? And then they look up and it just tells them the answer to the puzzle above the door. It's like, oh, okay. And then they press the button that they need to open mm-hmm. the door. You just press the corresponding button. So and then that opens the door. So they walk over the satanic symbol and How the did door she know which one to open? I think she said like, like three doors. Cerberus has a snake tail, so it's clearly the snake. I think that's what it was. It's literally the dumbest thing. Okay. It doesn't, I, it doesn't I honestly didn't really hear that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just the lore is that Cerberus is a three headed dog with a snake tail. So that's that was the snake, I guess. Whatever. I, okay, sure. But they, they go in, they go to Attila's uh, coffin, sarcophagus, they open it up. Attila's there with his cool plastic sword that's serrated. It's like oh a serrated my great sword. God, it is. It's well, it's flimsy as shit. It's one of those spirit Halloween, like, barbarian swords that mm-hmm. are, like, serrated but also curved. And it has a bone handle that's got gold all over it. And then there's a ruby on the end of it. It's, like, a mishmash oh, of, like, man. 12 or 16 different there's other a, things. There's like... a pirate doubloon on the, the end, on the palm. Yeah, like, it's, yeah, oh, god, the, the, the hilt of it is a snake like it's it's got like a thousand different things going on and none of them make sense and all of them clash and it just ends up like looking like the stupidest prop sword of all time it is oh it's so overdone and so bad because of it which makes it perfect for this movie like i actually really love the sword design because it's so over the top and stupid that it's And, and as they're taking the sword out the bad guys show up and cut her and they've They've abducted the director of the film. <laughs> <laughs> Which, okay, to describe the way that they abduct him, too, he's they're all going through this adventure cave together for 30 yeah. minutes. This is such a boring part of the movie, which is why we just brushed over all of it. And they're quipping back and forth at each other the whole time. They make it into this room. All four of them have been together the whole time. And all of a sudden, the one guy's gone, and they go... Oh, where did Willis go? I remember his name. God damn it. You do, um, yeah. <laughs> I go, where did, where did Willis go? And they're like, I don't know. He's always wandering off. Is he? What? <laughs> what? We've, well, he's never wandered off. He does. <laughs> yeah, come on. I don't know. He's probably lost somewhere. Should we look for him or do anything? Nah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he shows up with, with Willis, uh, mm. the director. John Terleski. And he's like, I'll kill him if you don't give me the sword. And I'll kill your brother, too. <laughs> I'm invincible now because I have the director of the film. They can't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so so he gets the sword. They throw the brother back. And he's like, well, I didn't have a deal with you to give Willis back. So I guess I'll kill him. <laughs> I'm a bad guy. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to leave now. Oh, I guess I should do something though. I'll I'll, I'll bomb the cave so it collapses or whatever. All right, bye, losers. <laughs> <laughs> <That'd be> uh, <laughs> I love the villain, by the way. I just wanna I wanna give a quick <laughs> shout out to Cutter, who was just he do, the actor does a really good sleaze ball, and yeah. the way that they make him the villain is he's like got spiky tipped frosted hair wrap around yeah. sunglasses and a jean like an and, and a jean jacket with yeah. the arms cut off it's fucking amazing what an ensemble yeah. truly a legend <laughs> as he's leaving the tomb though after collapsing the entrance mm-hmm. uh, he walks over the demonic satanic summoning circle yes which, of course, summons Cerberus Saji. Oh, gosh darn dang. Who could have seen that coming? Oh. Aw, shucks. All I wanted was this cool hell sword. I didn't need a hell dog. Yeah, and Cerberus starts killing his men. And he's like, oh, that's weird. And then just leaves. <laughs> he's I'm out. Also, everybody that gets this sword that goes, ah, now I have this sword and thus I am invincible and I can never lose a fight. Oh my god, there's a dog here that wants to fight me. I'm so terrified, I must run. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, no, but you you just picked up the invincibility sword. sword. You just kill Cerberus with it, right? Like, isn't that... 
you're invincible. You believe that you're invincible. And it's one of those things where you're like, okay, well, maybe this mercenary guy doesn't believe he's invincible. Like, maybe that's the problem. No, he believes it. He, no, it, yeah, it, he it, believes it. Yeah, later yeah. on, it's totally backed up. Everybody knows automatically. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. This sword 100% works. It's not fake. <laughs> she actually, in the cave, by the way, right now, she explains, too, how the Sword of Mars came into being. Do you want to... Do you remember? Do you I don't explain? remember how it happened. Oh, yeah, you, you can... don't? Oh, no. she, she goes in... As they find the Sword of Mars uncovered in Attila's tomb, she goes, Oh, that's the Sword of Mars. I know. See... Attila, when he was conquering everybody, said to get get the fear into his men, this sword that I've made that's very stupid is the sword of Mars, and that's why I've made it very dumb. And all of his men believed it so hard because he was so ruthless that it actually became the sword of Mars, oh. and that's what made him invincible. It funneled <laughs> all the power of human belief into it, so he actually became the real god of war. How did Satan go into that, though? I don't... Well, people huh. believed... People then believed that if you had to have him be invincible, then, then you also had to have a Satan. And everybody knows that Satan has to have a good doggo. Oh, no, that like, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, Everybody just believed it really hard. So, uh, the good guys <laughs> are are stuck... The, yeah. They're stuck inside Attila's tomb, and they're like, Oh, we better get out. Oh, but how are we gonna get out? You collapse the entrance. Don't worry... The Huns would never make a, a tomb with only one entrance to a burial chamber. As everybody knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they go to the other entrance, and Cerberus is there being like, Bork, Bork, I have a dog, Bork. Yep. So they can't well, he's get He's kind of breaking through the stones, <laughs> yeah. He's he's coming through yeah. the main entrance that was yeah. blown up. So uh, the, the macho man, Randy Savage, <laughs> like, starts covering the hole where Cerberus is and rocks and he's holding the rocks there. He's like, oh no, Cerberus can't get through. Extremely heavy styrofoam rocks. Styrofoam rocks in front of it. And then Samantha says, the Huns would never make only two entrances to a burial chamber. (laughs) Well, no, this is only... (laughs) Because because he's like... No, but that was the first entrance. Boy, because that was the first entrance. That was just blown up. That was the second, wasn't it? No. It had to be. No, oh it was the first God, entrance okay. that was blown up. It, no, that was the one covered by rocks that they blew up that locked them in. And Cerberus starts they breaking the through that. No, 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 no. Okay. But, you understand why I thought that was very dumb. <laughs> yeah, if okay. you believe that, yes. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, he's like, well, what yeah, do you want yeah. me to do to get Cerberus out of here then? Like, throw Attila's bones at him? And Samantha's like, oh, Attila's bones. <laughs> Good boys love bones. That would work. No, no, the the lore, the deep dark lore of Cerberus said that anybody who moves Attila's bones will be taken to the underworld, but that wasn't a threat. That just meant that Attila had a secret chamber underneath his bones. Mm-hmm. There's a, a poem there that says, yeah. anybody who disturbs Attila's bones will go into the earth's taint. And be yeah. and then it says and be locked there forever. And she goes, no, don't worry about that. Let's just go in. Yeah, that part doesn't matter. <laughs> that, that part doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. So they also that chamber. part doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. The it's movie irrelevant. forgets about but it immediately. They, they open a secret chamber underneath the sarcophagus and yes. dive into the cave, leaving Cerberus up top, being like, oh, oh, I want to okay. eat you. Oh. Uh, meanwhile, mm-hmm. Cutter has thrown a grenade in their shitty van and blown it up while walking away from the explosion with his sunglasses on. Yeah, yeah, and his his cool guy frosted cool. tips wrap around sunglasses and jean jacket. Yep. Uh, and he walks back up to his, his subordinates and he takes their phone. He's like, I'm going to call the dictator of North Korea. <laughs> God. Hey, uh, I got that sword you were looking for, but now that I feel invincible like Attila holding the sword of Mars, I think it's time we renegotiate our our fee. How about double? Come meet me at this uh, small town in Romania. Yeah, what the Stras- fuck is that place called? Uh, oh, yeah, whatever it's called. Meet me at the bar. Yeah. I'm going to go get some <laughs> Budweiser. Yeah, Light. So he, he, I'm looking out up. for my calories. <laughs> 
so then he goes to the pub with his with his goons, and his goons are like, uh, okay. Can we just get our money? Can we just, actually, can we just go. Yeah, I don't want to deal with that fucking Cerberus thing. That wasn't part that of the deal. That sword's plastic, dude. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. And all the all the NPCs, all the Romanians. From, yeah, the oh, Romanians God. NPCs from <laughs> Resident Evil Four mm-hmm, mm-hmm. approach him, and an old man, an elderly man in his early forties, walks up to him. Yeah. And is like, oh, you have to put that sword back. Where'd you get it from? Anyway, oh, uh, uh, you know, just a castle. There was a castle in that matte painting where the paint, uh, you know, like the clouds moved. Uh, oh my god, like a, when that castle was abandoned, Spirit Halloween moved in there. You have to return that prop Halloween sword right now. It's yeah. Attila's. Attila so had a tells- costume party back in the 1500s with it. It's very <laughs> sacred. <laughs> he tells that guy to fuck off. Mm. And uh, I guess... Later on, he ends up just like Conaning those two those two he goons just, that try to get yeah, money out the, of him. The goons are just like, we just want our money and we can leave. We don't want to renegotiate shit. So you've already been paid. So some of the money, give us our part out of your half for now. Yeah, you do you whatever fucking yeah. shit you want, and we'll just go. I think so that's a like, totally fair proposition, right? Like It seems fine. So then he yeah, chops just, them to pieces. Just, yeah, he chops one of them to pieces. The other one runs off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he but, even says, he's like, you know what I... Oh, he goes, oh, you know what I hate? Disloyalty. And he runs the guy through. The other guy runs away and he goes, I also hate cowardice. And then he sits down and has another beer. <laughs> he just does, because also he doesn't care about cowardice. Yeah, I don't get about that. He hates guy, it, you know. but he's not going to chase the guy down. Look, there's a, there's I a forgot level. about that. I forgot a, that. You have, to, you have to reach a certain threshold to get Conan. <laughs> he just right? runs he's out running of Running away is like just below the line. And yeah. That's too much effort. You know, he's <laughs> running away. I don't want to go after him. I have to Come get on, up, man. and then I've got this Bud Light that's just gonna get warm, and nobody wants a yeah, warm nobody Bud wants a Light. Warm Bud Light, yeah. Come on, maybe a Pabst, but not a Bud Light. No. So, so he, that scene kind of ends. It goes back to our crew running away from Cerberus, and one of the Beavis and Butthead crew. Uh, yes, the, says, the one that's alive. Yeah, yeah the you, other one's you dead. go forward. I'm gonna uh, sacrifice myself with the C4. Which he doesn't do. He just blows up the C4 from a safe distance. I mean, he says that he needs to put a personal touch on it because he doesn't have any triggers for it anymore. And they're like, oh my god, he's going to die. And he goes, no, 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 I'll catch up with you. So anyways, now I'm going to go die. <laughs> yeah, but but he doesn't though. He blows up the C4 and then he catches up with them. And then, and then he, he dies. Yes, <laughs> no. I, like... Yeah, at some point he was going to. Yeah, the, the CG, by the way, on his because Cerberus rips his legs off, but the mm-hmm. CG looks like CG hams on the end of his legs. Oh like, yes, yeah, it looks like cartoon bad. hams. Like it's like the <laughs> like the, the meat with a little bone out, in it. Like, yes, like the yeah. Bone mm-hmm. from Among Us. <laughs> and and then he just goes ah ah my legs ah and everybody looks back at him. They go oh no he's dead and then they just run away. As he's screaming, and they don't... As he's like, ah... Uh... Nobody... They don't actually ever show him die? They just show him no. with le- no legs. He just... That's for Cerberus, too. Sits there and wiggles his yeah, little sequel. stump legs. Yeah, they were setting up screams. sequel bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> anyway, we cut back to the subordinate that ran away, who's just, mm-hmm. like, hiding in the bushes, and there's a snake near his leg, so he does what a normal person would do. He pulls out his nine millimeter and blasts it. Blam, 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 blam. Like he fires like off like bullets. twelve rounds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he looks up, and that was an Eddie old snake. That was Cerberus's tail. Oh, that crafty little uh, Shucks. <laughs> so Cerberus offs him, and then we like hard cut to the most baffling scene in the movie, which is like. Romanian punk rock teenagers in the woods kissing from the 70s from the 70s it suddenly really suddenly looks like a 70s film like everybody's hair is done that way yeah. and they're all just out in the woods just camping it, drinking it just cuts to like Camp Crystal Lake yep 
Well, we were like, promised a slasher. Like, read the back of the box, because the, the first start of this yeah. movie is all about the nuclear weapons in Korea and fucking Sword of Mars and all archaeology. So read the synopsis that you read me. Yeah, this makes it sound like a slasher movie. So when a band of mercenaries steals a Toe of the Hun's fabled sword, that happens. Which, uh, yeah, It, it triggers an ancient curse that awakens the most feared creature in all of mythology. Cerberus, the monstrous three-headed dog with a serpentine tail and a thirst for blood. That's where it cuts. That's the whole thing. Yeah, which, you, it which makes, makes it, it sound seem like... A like... Film. Yeah. Well, and you'd, you'd think that then the mercenaries take the sword in the first ten minutes, and then it's about beating Cerberus. Yeah. Rather than Cerberus shows up 55, 60 minutes into this 80-minute movie. <laughs> it's like right at the end. Yeah. Yeah. But, so Cerberus starts, like, offing all these campers one by one, sometimes three at the same time because there's three. I was going to say, not one by one. He grabs three, <laughs> he gets a three for at one point. That was real good. That was actually pretty funny. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I see there's some doing, very yeah. good scenes of a extremely <laughs> bad, like, mushy CGI dog popping heads off of people. The, then it cuts to the practical effect of, like, their headless body with, like, blood squirting out and stuff. And the practical effects are really funny, not, good, like, B-movie yeah, gore. They're not good, but it's, like, Kool-Aid shooting out. And it's funny. Yeah, it's, like, the Evil Dead gore stuff. Like, yeah. it's all that. Like, it's all the Splatterhouse kind of gore stuff, and it's really fun. But it's opposite just, like, the... It looks like 94 computer graphics. <laughs> like, it looks yeah, like it's, it's from so a, a bad shareware ga DOS game from, like, 95 or something. But Macho Man, Samantha, and her brother uh, make it out, finally. Mm -hmm. Somehow. They just, they wander around in the dark until they finally find their way out. And they get back to their destroyed van, and they're like, well, now that we're out, you can go deal with Cutter and I can go home. And sounds good to which Samantha says, uh, or cause, cause Samantha said that to him and he's like, Oh, you mm -hmm. want to just leave? She's like, no, I was, I was lying. I want to stay and deal with Cerberus and also kill that fucker cutter. <laughs> we I need to stop North, North Korea from launching all of their suitcase yeah, we bomb need to stop nukes. North Korea from launching nukes and, and Cerberus and, and <sighs> an invincible magic sword. And in order to do that, we're going to use... There's a there's another tale about Cerberus you might not have heard. Get real close, kids. See, what they did was they used a magical lyre to play music, which made Cerberus fall asleep for a thousand years. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. And that'll, that'll certainly That'll happen. solve our Cerberus problem, where we're worried that he's going to kill this one small town in Romania. It won't yeah. do anything about the 12 suitcase nukes, nukes that North Korea nope. is going to send out around the world to start <laughs> World War III as they become an invincible army marching across the globe with a magical sword of power, but Cerberus will be gone. Yeah, <laughs> speaking sides. of which, the dictator of North Korea shows up at the bar. Mm -hmm. like, this is like <laughs> it's Romanian bar. Uh -huh. yeah, this is like an hour in movie time. Yes, like yeah. within the story, and he shows up. Maybe like, oh, less, I see. Honestly, I see you killed your uh, subordinate there. What happened to that? Oh, he didn't agree with the plan of me giving you the sword and getting double the money. Oh, well, technically he did agree with that, but he wanted to leave early, and I said no clocking out early, and then I cut him, and it looked really cool. Uh, it was super fun. I had a good one liner. It yeah, was, really I had fucking it was funny a good one liner. One -liner. <laughs> and the dictator's like, "Look, bro, I brought your two times the amount that we agreed on for your. F Just give me the fucking sword. I already gave you money. Come on." <laughs> <sighs> and, and Cutter's like, "Oh yeah." Well, the deal's changed. Now I'm going to kill you and take control of your nukes, and I'm going to be the leader of North Korea because it's like Highlander. There can be only one, and when I cut off your head, I'll be the leader of North Korea. 
and I'll be invincible because I have the sword. And the dictator of North Korea is like, that's fucking stupid. That's dumb. There's no magic sword that's going to make you invincible. That's why I hired you, to find the magic sword that makes you invincible. Let me gun you down while you hold the sword that I know makes you invincible, but I don't believe it makes you invincible. That's why I'm shooting you. But also, I know it makes you invincible because that's why I bought it from you. Anyways, I'm shooting you now. Yeah, Weirdly enough, him. that doesn't work. <laughs> and then as he goes to pick up the sword, uh, Cutter just stands up and then stabs him with the sword. And I think he decapitates <gasps> him. Oh yeah, no, he, and, it, it's very good, yeah. And then he, and then instead of using the sword on the rest of the dictator's, you know, army that's surrounding the building, he just shoots them all one by one with a nine mil. Yep. <laughs> all holding the sword in the other hand, I guess. And then, as he's, like, taking out the last ones in the street, all the NPCs from Resident Evil 4 show back up again, and they're, like, barricading the streets with fire, and they're like, ha ah, Cerberus, the Hound of Hell, will never get through this flame. To which Cerberus, the Hound from Hell, jumps over the flame. <laughs> and starts eating all of the Romanian villagers, and he's and, shooting all the Romanian yeah. villagers, and Cerberus is eating them, and it's just... It's just a bad scene, man. Yeah. But Cutter sees Cerberus jump in, like, to the mm-hmm. streets, and he has a really, really good one-liner. Do you remember it? All right, so as he, as he it. looks at Cerberus, he's like, who let the dog out? Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So you said good one-liner, <laughs> and I believed you. No, he bought like him, and the, the fucking thing. Anyway. Which is relevant <laughs> in just a minute. Because our other team is sitting there going, well, where are we going to find a magic fucking liar? Because this is a very dumb plan. She goes, maybe it wasn't a magic liar at all. Maybe it's just if you play any music at all to Cerberus, then Cerberus goes away. Because, or something. I don't know. Sure. Music kills Satan, I, I think. Fuck it. I don't know. I'm an archaeologist. I'm working with what I got here. <laughs> Who's got an iPod? Somebody pull out an iPod. Somebody play some Baja Men. Whenever anybody plays that "Who Let the Dogs Out" song, the fucking room Oom clears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's It'll work on work. Cerberus too. So, so that group splits up. Where Macho Man goes after Cutter, and Samantha and her brother goes to a car so they can play music on the stereo. All I'm saying is that I would absolutely go to hell rather than listen "Who Let the Dogs Out." <laughs> yeah. But, so, uh, Cutter and Macho Man have, like, a, a duel on top of the rooftop. Mm-hmm. And the other two get into the car and start blasting Baja Men. And it, it doesn't fucking do anything. At all. Wow. Weird. Weird. <laughs> and as Cerberus is about to attack Samantha, the brother's like, ah, but Cerberus, you didn't know that I was a pitcher in the minor leagues. And starts throwing rocks at him, baseball style, which is irrelevant because he gets his ass kicked immediately. Yeah, Cerberus grabs him and throws him through a building. I don't know so why he he's has to very be baseball dead. man, but whatever. <laughs> Meanwhile, fight on the roof is happening, and Cutter gets the upper hand finally. And flips around the sword to do a cool killing blow. And oopsie poopsie, he drops it. Oh no, the one thing that you can never do is the cool sword. Oh no! Butterfingers. Yes, like his hands are sweaty. You know, he's been holding that sword all day. He should have chucked it up or something, you know. He literally, with zero interference from anyone else... Nobody does anything, nobody distracts him, nobody fires a shot at him, <laughs> nobody says a one-liner and get like gets his attention. And nope, he just, as he goes to kill the guy, he just flips the sword real cool and yeah. accidentally drops it. That's he accidentally drops it, and then he trips and falls off the building. Yes. Like, and then Cerberus eats him, and like beheads him, and throws his body. And like, oh, that was easy. <laughs> huh. Uh, so as, as Cerberus is now going after Samantha, Macho Man jumps off the roof, like three stories, mm-hmm. which is, he's fine. 
and he picks up the sword and then he's like i gotta kill cerberus with the sword in this epic battle we'll go one-on-one -on -one in a really long fight i'm just gonna throw the fucking thing <laughs> he's got a good goddamn arm because he throws that thing like yeah. 500 meters. It's it's a fucking like three football fields away from him. It <laughs> like is, it's yeah. it is a block and a half down the street when he throws that thing. Yep, I, it can't have good aerodynamics. It's a fucking plastic <laughs> spirit Halloween sword. But he hits Cerberus and Cerberus dies and then Cerberus goes back to hell. And the brother's also not dead. He just went through a window. And he got bit by Cerberus. Which has previously killed everybody. <laughs> it's fine. And and then Samantha, her brother. Hey, dude. And hey, Macho man. Man. Listen, he's that brother can survive anything. He figured out a way to go into gambling debt to North Korea. <laughs> this, that brother. All amount of two thousand. For a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, like for an absolute pittance of money, <laughs> for gambling debts. Yep. Yeah, like, if you can figure that out, you can survive anything. The dude's a fucking living human cockroach. <laughs> but, like, so Samantha, her brother, and Macho Man limp off into the sunset, and she's like, if you ever get a gambling debt with the dictator of North Korea again, don't even tell me about it. <laughs> that it ends. Then, then, credits, done. We don't need a film anymore. <clears throat> it just thens us. <laughs> What a movie. So, like, I think there's a reason this film is not anywhere streaming, and there's no way to watch it, and I had to get some fucking shitty DVD that wouldn't play on anything, that was widescreen, but was clearly full screen <laughs> chopped. I, that's not fair. I had fun for about two-thirds of this movie. The middle <laughs> part, where they're going through caves and doing dumb Indiana Jones shit in the most budget dumb way possible can go fuck itself but yeah th this does remind me of a simpler time of sci-fi films though yes where i would go to the sci-fi sci channel, channel till and i would watch just yeah. garbage but it wasn't like intentionally ironic garbage right like yeah they didn't realize they were making garbage here this man tried so, to yeah. make something that he think is like i think that they had fun with it and i think that they knew that it was budget so it wasn't going like they weren't expecting to make uh you know like the some blockbuster movie like they understood no, what they no. had on their hands but at the same time they did try to make it a movie like it was something that he thought he could do a movie on and it wasn't just sitting there like huh isn't this stupid mm. yeah it wasn't like, just like like which is what the sharknado the movies feel like the whole time yeah the Sharknado I, movies aren't just winking at the audience. They're staring at the audience and, like, constantly turning the dials of, like, is this dumb enough? Do you like this? Is this what you like? I don't know. I don't understand any of this. We just made I, a lot think, of bad movies to try and trick people, and now people think that's funny, so we're leaning into that, and we don't understand why. I think if you took this idea, we're yes. going to have the sword of Attila the Hun, which is the sword of Mars from the God of War... That summons a Cerberus that attacks a small town, and you give that to a different director, I think you could have a fun movie, just some dumb nonsense film, yeah. right? Yeah, and then yeah. and then you throw in the dictator of North Korea for no reason, and you're like, all right, whatever, I don't fucking care. But this one took itself so seriously to the point where it drags, unfortunately. Yeah, like, it, it doesn't hit that so bad. It's good, Mark, for me. Even if it's fun to talk about. I think it does... Like I said, I think it does for yeah. about half to two-thirds of the movie for me, yeah. personally. It's just that that middle part. Their, their Indiana Jones shit is so laughably bad, and it's just mm -hmm. so long and boring, and they're all, like, whipping at each other, but it's the Beavis and Butthead characters, and it's <laughs> like, dumb hur, 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 hur. guys... I wish that we weren't digging this anymore. <laughs> like yeah. it's that they're, they're digging walls and stuff and just be like, uh, man, I wish I could have a, a Bud Light in a bar. <laughs> she yeah. said pressure <laughs> plate. <laughs> she said pressure. booby trap. It's <laughs> booby. <laughs> booby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's like, uh, that's oh, why I'm saying that like, I think a drags. different director could have actually made this like a cult classic thing. I think it could be there. 
it has the elements of just weird nonsense that I think could make that. I oh, just yeah. don't think uh, the execution I mean, on... is there is the problem. I will agree that us yeah. describing a movie that is about a man who goes into gambling debt to the dictator of North Korea because the guy's going to set off some dirty bombs around the world, but he needs to first get the magical sword of Attila the Hun, which is guarded by the Hellhound yeah. Cerberus. Um, that sounds a lot more interesting what this movie actually manages to do with that. <laughs> yes. <sighs> That being said, I, it still has all those elements in it, and just even saying those out loud <laughs> makes it worth watching a bit. Like, that, that just, just saying all of those things together almost makes this worthwhile for me. Because, <laughs> well, what did you watch? Jesus. <laughs> well, have I got a tale for you? No. Uh, anyway, let's, let's write the dog. Let's, let's write yeah, the dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, Cerberus, of course. This Cerberus looks fucking terrible. <laughs> Holy shit. Also, I want to point out, and this is something you can't see again because it's a podcast, but the cover art is like this wicked cool fucking wolf, three-headed wolf thing. It looks yeah, like yeah. Uh, it looks like one of those posters you would get at like a Spencer's or something. Yes. <laughs> like the, the really three wolf moon shit. It's, it's a, yeah, it's a wolf, wolves howling at the moon. It, it's got yeah. that look of it. Yeah. And the actual Cerberus is like this goofy Muppet. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. The wolves that you're showing, like they're all kind of mangy and matted and menacing. like that always, well, yeah. and, and because of that, that makes them a little menacing in a way. The thing is here is that they made smooth Cerberus. It, it's like a Cerberus. Rubber. Yeah, it's Real like a smooth. rubber dog or something. It looks weird. It's it's like Triumph the Insult comic dog is a horror they, villain. They, they smoothed Cerberus. Don't post smooth Cerberus on me, please. No, <laughs> no more. And yeah, it, it just yeah the CG good. just... I think that it's just because the CG wasn't there. Like, CG couldn't... They couldn't do the textures and stuff on it, right? Like, so it's just... No, it, it's kind of like the first Scooby-Doo live action that we watched. It's around that same era, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's what like, I mean. Like, they don't have enough to... Like, they can't render fur and stuff on it, so they just smooth it. So it's just smooth dog. It's just a very smooth And then, smooth like, the only Cerberus. thing Cerberus does is, like, he beheads people a lot. Which and, is pretty good, I'm gonna pretty say. Good. And, and then when he's not beheading them, there's three heads, so each head takes a part of the body, and they pull it into three parts, and that's it. That's all Cerberus does. There's no fire or but, anything. Cerberus is just a borker. He just goes bark, bark and bites things. You say that, but I would like to raise you that Cerberus has magic ham leg power. Yeah. It can make, it can <laughs> Cerberus does have magic ham leg power. I, he can turn any legs into any hams anywhere in the world. The other thing that's bothering me about the Cerberus is that it looks like a Heroes of Might and Magic 3 Cerberus. Yeah, it really does. It like it, yeah. I, it, it looks like what it wouldn't look like in real life, but like a stylized video game Cerberus. Like that's weird. Yeah. Anyway, Cerberus is a good dog. Uh, turns into a slasher villain for literally no reason to eat a bunch of campers. I don't know why that happened. And and honestly, Cerberus just wants a pet and and his sword back. Like just give him a good pet. Maybe throw Attila's bones. Adam, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, give him a couple of Attila's bones. Like, boy. like uh, I would give Cerberus a six, six, six out of ten, which is reserved for only the best boy. I, no, sorry, I, no. I, yeah, I'm like, I, I can't, I can't get to the six, six, six for for Cerberus. Wow. That that's listen, that's got to be reserved for Greta. It's it's always wow. it's always. Cerberus wasn't cutting any brake lines on any of the villain's vehicles, okay? Cerberus didn't steal one of the dirty bombs and rig it so that it blew up the dictator <laughs> of North Korea, which, in a better film like Play Dead, he absolutely would have done as a joke. Yeah. So I, I, I'm going to have to give him, like, a... I'm docking him uh, a couple marks for that, so I'm going to give him a, a 6 6 three and 3 quarters... Okay, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Three, yeah. six, six, three, point uh, three, 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 three. There's also like the two Dobermans that go after uh, the North Korean Dobermans that go after the subordinate. Uh, they're just good dogs. They they love to roughhouse and and chase things. 
They yeah. love they love playing. They getting pets. Oh god, that scene too. It's so they do a mauling of that guy. I just want to. I remembered a thing from that scene and how they do it, where he's on the ground yelling, and they splatter some fake blood on his face as he's yelling in a close up, and it cuts to two other henchmen going, "Oh damn, snap!" Like from around the corner. <laughs> they do, yeah. They're like, "Holy shit, that's fucked up." <laughs> anyway, we're not gonna show it for you, but. He's oh, playing man. with that good boy real hard. I I do want to point out that this Cerberus movie, and I'm I'm double checking because I mm. want to make sure. I think this might be a Rough Cuts exclusive. I don't think this is on any other podcast. Oh, or... I, it's nowhere. I can't find anything about I, I this besides any, like the one Wikipedia or whatever. Video about this. This is an exclusive movie for Rough Cuts. I can't find anything. So, world premiere. <laughs> the effort I had to put in to get this film and to record it and make it so we could watch it was a lot. Uh, so if you appreciated that and you liked this episode, make sure to um, check out our Patreon. We have a Patreon. Check that out. You can also follow us on Twitter at Rough Cuts Cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can follow us on TikTok if you want to see clips at Rough Cuts Cast. Uh, and, of course, you can also email us if you have any suggestions of films uh, or any feedback or anything like that. Roughcutscast at gmail.com. Uh, I think that's all the socials. That sure is. I just, I've been looking at this. I searched for Cerberus, and I'm realizing, because I saw this before, but it's only hitting me now. So there's the box art Cerberus of the mm-hmm. three cool wolves with the really long tail, and it actually looks pretty rad. Like, the box art is neat. And then there's also the CGI smooth Cerberus that we know of, which shows yes. up a bunch. But then on Sci-Fi, like, on the official Sci-Fi Channel website, they have a promotional image for the movie Cerberus, of a rubber puppet monster Cerberus with, like, chains on it that looks like a, a practical model of some kind. Like, probably a small-scale oh. model that looks like shit. Like, it's, it looks like an awful rubber monster. And we don't ever see that anywhere, so I don't know where the fuck they got that one It could too. be a different Cerberus movie? No. No, Okay. No, I mean, oh. like, it's the Sci-Fi Channel Cerberus. Like, the search for a fable sword guarded by a three-headed hellhound sweeps up an art historian. It's it's they this just movie. Found random images, I guess. Weird. I, like... Yeah, weird. I, uh, I found a Japanese <laughs> poster, though, so... I don't know. Anyway, uh, that'll be it for this episode of Cerberus. Mm. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, and thank you for supporting the podcast. And uh... without you, how would Boyks find this Cerberus DVD that fell off of a truck locally and landed onto a uh, blanket in a flea market where he could buy it along with the bootleg DVD player that would play it? Yeah, I I was checking out my local Spencer's store. I think I'm going to go back because they had just like a whole fucking rack of Attila the Hun. Uh, sort of invincibility swords, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I, I just gotta I kill like... enough people so that people believe that it's the sword no. of Mars, and then I can go and become the dictator of North Korea. So, well, I, that's a little extreme. I just wanted it for a costume for Halloween, but all right, yeah, you do you, I guess. <laughs> all right, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm just saying, see you, folks. Okay. I can't believe that he picked up the cell phone and was like, like the cell phone from the dictator when he kills him and he goes, hi, General, General, what, what was it? Like a General Kim or something like General Kim. Now I'm the dictator of North Korea. And you know that I am because I have the cell phone of the dictator of North Korea. Yeah. Therefore you follow me now. Hell of a movie.